This is a governor housing for a 9N Ford tractor that we we're working on for a friend of ours. And, and on the governor shaft, there's a lot of play while well, they normally wear down. They say you can put a little shim in here to help shim it up tight. There's another, the shaft and rod goes on here that hooks to the fork. And there's a spring that connects the two. I should have brought that over. But I'll try and get some pictures. We'll stick it back together for you when I'm done. But with the way this is wore, there's, <laughs> it's really sloppy. It floats in there, it's wore into the other piece some too, so I think there's enough end play. I'm just going to make a washer out of some shim stock basically that will help hold this down even. And I've got a, some bushings I had picked up in an auction that this one will be about the right size. What, I've, what I'm doing, I've got it set up in the middle here, taking the boring head and going to do a pass around the outside to shave her down so I can get this bushing to fit and cut this off to size and then I'll set the arm up and bore this out even and get her chewed up and so she'll be back as good as new that way I could almost leave it but I figure it's wearing into the other piece already I'd like to as long as it's apart I'd like to chew it up there's, it uses a fly ball governor system basically where there's four ball bearings in there that as your RPMs increase or decrease they move in and out on a cone shaped piece which I'll try showing some more of that and later in the video here but for now we're about ready to set her up I'm gonna grab the little button back stir it indicator there and I've got a transfer punch that is a 3 8 shaft so she fits in there and ah, there's a little bit of play in the needle bearing I think when I put the indicator on it before it was only about two thousandths play there and we'll get set up and put the indicator on it and we'll go from there got her zeroed in pretty nice and moving it up and down the transfer punch I only get about a thou you know, almost two thousandths on the front to back but and side to side and within less than a thou almost a half is all I'm gonna do just a fairly light pass I've got to take almost forty thousandths off for that bushing but we'll see what we get Need about 874 for finish. Right now I'm 894, so another 20,000 should do her.
So it probably took me oh, a half hour, 45 minutes to get this thing set up and trued in here. Pull the rag out of there. So I was clamping against the machine finish down here and just against the back here, which it only contacts about in the middle, so I didn't need to put a rod or anything in there. And it just took a little while to get her trued up both ways. A lot of loosening and tightening of the vise before she actually came out and stayed even. And it wasn't 100% accurate with this surface back when they made it. That it's, and that's what threw me off a little more. South bend here. And decided I could set it up that way. I did make an aluminum block. I was going to do it on the mill and support it on the block. I could clamp it off to three arms that are sticking out there, but decided the chuck on the south bend is small enough. I could fasten it between the arms. And I've actually got it zeroed in. Well, you can't really see it, but <laughs> you can move it in and out for the thickness of this piece, which is only about half inch and you get a different reading every place you go because of the way it's wore so I kind of averaged out to where we're looking pretty good that way. So it was running pretty close before. As many times as I moved it and maybe yeah she's off a little here. Right between the arms, I need to go back in a little. Need my little lead one. But an aluminum works too. Yeah, since I've had to loosen these in order to line this back up again, I'll have to check her on the inside. And there's where that more part is, right by that arm. So. Originally wanted to set it up the other way, but it ended up the ball was just hitting the edge of the truck. Get it down here where you can see it better. This ball was hitting the edge of the truck, so it was throwing me off a little bit. It wasn't quite clear. On this side, we're. Well, it's not going to show up in the camera, I suppose. About a thou and a half off until you get to where it's war here. and. She lost probably four thousand, sir. I'll check her on the inside again and see how bad we change that. Should be good to go. see it. Yeah, it moved quite a bit. Not bad on those two. Even there, like I was mentioning before, you can, it's good most of the way and you get to the bad spot and she's off about the same on the inside as the outside. And if I move in the very back edge, there she's only off by about a half thou. So I'm not going <laughs> to not going to ask for any better than that. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Okay, get a rough check here. Basically, I only got to take 60 thousandths out of it. That bushing is a one inch bushing. I'm at 939 in there. I get the snap gauge out and check her. After you take a pass or two. And a 
of course I gotta try moving the camera. Yeah, if I take time to get my other mount adapted to this lathe, that would help too. It was only twenty thousandths off. But do a rough check again for the heck of it. So that's a lot better. Praise for Should be good. I can tap that bushing in, we'll cut her off right there and with it in place. We'll be good to go. Sticking behind just a fuzz so I can finish it off here. After I tapped the bushing into the piece, I actually just cut it off with a hacksaw and then machined it. Didn't turn the camera back on. This piece actually gets the fork on, which is basically part of how the governor works in the first place. The spring fastens on there to keep the arms tensioned so it pulls back. What happens is in this cone shaped piece here, the fork that goes on the shaft I just put in actually rides on here. And the four balls that are in here, we've got another plate. Uh, you can, if it shows up there, getting light right it might. You can see little marks in here where the balls have rode. Usually this piece rotates enough that it, they don't get wear marks and there are some flat spots on these. That's why 
There's a kit you can get that will give you the new plate and this bearing, the thrust bearing that's in here and the new balls and everything else is good enough on here that you don't have to worry about it but as it spins faster you probably can't really see it in there but it makes the balls fly out so that it pushes this piece in and out and that controls your throttle and everything when it calls for more power and she slows down she goes in and that opens the throttle a little more but then when she's over revving like coasting downhill or whatever it'll move out and close your throttle down so you're not getting the extra governor assist is a basic operation of it and this all goes in there and this piece sets over it and there's a screw in the housing here that goes in a little notch there to hold this piece in place and your drive gear so that's what the basic inside of a fly ball governor looks like and I've got a little well, back when I did that fan shaft for the 5088 tractor, I've got a shot here, I'll put at the end of this video, of the fan shaft in and running before we put the final this metal This is a 9 Ford, I'm working on that governor housing, or did the video of the housing. The governor actually sets down here under the generator, rebuilt the carb on this, set pink piece down there is actually the battery tray that was all corroded while the battery had leaked acid over the years and pretty well ate all the paint up needed a new water pump and did a hot pink on that too because that's it's a friend's tractor and it's kind of became our trademark over the years that we used to when we'd do like an oil change or something that way we'd paint the dipstick paint just to see how long it took them to check oil and we'd get a phone call and all of a sudden they check oil and find that the rear axle seals were leaking on it and that's why that's all apart and if you follow me on Facebook at all you probably saw this custom puller Ronnie had to do I'll show here at the end when I go back to the other shop how the axle is set up you had to extend the puller by 22 inches in order to get the bearing set up off the hub here well you'll see when I show the drums but this was his wife's father's tractor originally and it's actually had block repair done on it years ago and, and he had her painted up pretty good for a while there but that's been a lot of years ago that he did that too and, and most of this, well some of this is some of the baking soda we used to neutralize the acid but there again with all the acid on it we're gonna once we put the axles back in we'll roll it out the door and pressure wash it and give that a shot of red of paint again there just to make her look a little so better for now. the axle off that 9N Ford and the puller head to set up here you're actually pulling this part of the hub off it has a tapered roller bearing in it but it actually works backwards of, of the way a lot of them do the tapered bearing presses onto the shaft and then gets another collar that you have to heat up and put on to lock it in place and then you're actually you shim this piece in or out to tighten up against the bearing because your outer cup is pressed into here and normally like in a car you have an outer nut you adjust the pressure on it for the, your end play well on this you're doing it backwards you're pulling the cup towards the bearing where the bearing is pressed onto the axle so that's why you had a little lock collar that you heat up to take the old one off you drill a quarter inch hole in it and then take a chisel and split it and then once that's off you have to pull the bearing off and you could actually take the nuts out of the from the drum and everything that way take that apart and you could probably get it in the press then and do it too but it was easier in this case to modify a puller and then for tapping the bearing back on he actually took a tube and 
and stuck a bit. Took one of the collars that he had split. Uh, you know, may not have much light here, but you can see the split here where he drilled it and chiseled it apart. Well, that's got enough play, so you can use this to weld an end cap on the pipe. Use that to cap the bearing back into place. And then when we heat the collar up, in case we have to tap it in, we can just slide her down, use it basically like a slide hammer, and tap it on. Whatever it takes to work. Hands nice and steady. A lot more tin work to go back on it. Six and a half foot tall, 20 inch wide tread pattern. All back together, ready to go home. At least the fan shaft's back in good shape and he's good to go.